Welcome back everyone, I bought the Samsung Galaxy A54 5G and I've been putting it through its paces for long enough to bring you some useful insight and confidently bring you my full review. Samsung's new mid-range device is full of pleasant surprises like the quality of those rear cameras and the battery screen on time which we'll talk about in detail. It has a 5000mAh battery, up to 8GB of RAM, a 120Hz AMOLED display and it's powered by a new chip. There's also a glass back to give it a new look. Everything from the display quality, speakers, gaming performance, battery life, durability and more will be addressed and explained now. One of my favorite things about the Galaxy A54 is the main rear camera. It records 4K video at 30 frames per second and it gets everything right in my opinion. The color saturation, dynamic range, and autofocus are excellent. Low light photography is a highlight here on this camera and we get many photo settings from higher end devices which we'll cover in a bit. This display is brighter than its predecessor and it represents colors more accurately. It's the right amount of saturation for my liking. Samsung has kept in the micro SD card reader which is why I went with the 128GB model. This phone is capable of super fast charging as many Galaxy A series devices have been in the past. This one will do 0 to 100% charge in 1 hour and 22 minutes and in under half an hour you can get more than halfway charged. For battery screen on times I want to give you a few different use cases. The first of which is my light use day, where I film the battery test comparison between this phone and the Galaxy S23. I got over 11 hours of screen on time on the A54 with 8% battery remaining. I tried several days of using the phone with location service, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth always on while periodically switching to mobile data and playing some graphically demanding games, all on full brightness without using dark mode or power savings. I considered this heavier use and for that, 9 hours of screen time was more than satisfactory for me. I also tried using the power saving options for a few days and that resulted in me being able to easily make it through 2 full days with a bit of light gaming. For the mobile gamers, I wanted to have a battery test result to show my usage when I played for several hours on high brightness and when all those games were on the high graphics settings. 7.5 hours for this use case was impressive. Most people can expect to end the day with between 8 to 15% battery remaining without using power saving options. The unboxing experience was the most underwhelming part of this purchase. The box is nice, though inside we only find a USB-C to C cable, paperwork and the SIM tool. Since I pre-ordered my phone from the UK, I got a free pair of Galaxy Buds 2 with it for being an early purchaser. I do wish Samsung would still provide us with the clear plastic case in the box, but I know package contents vary depending on your region, so if you have the A54, let me know what came with yours. Back to the display, we get a 6.4 inch Super AMOLED screen with a density of 403 pixels per inch. On paper, that is a lower pixel density than the previous three iterations, so we know Samsung is not playing the specification comparison game. Rather, going with what will provide the majority of people with a good balance between battery performance and a display that has good sharpness. It is an overall step up from the A53 5G and the A52 because of the brightness improvement, which is noticeable outdoors. By the way, the colors of the Super AMOLED panel are beautiful. For viewing at night, it gets dim enough to not strain my eyes. Occasionally, I turn on the extra dim mode and eye comfort shield. By the way, my phone did come with some pre-installed non-Samsung apps, like Spotify, Netflix, and Facebook, but of course you can uninstall them, and there's no crazy bloatware here. As you would expect, we have the built-in screen recorder and Samsung secure folder which are both helpful additions in One UI. Samsung has a good track record of updating their mid-range phones in some time, and one of the major benefits of going with this device over some of the other brands is their commitment to fast security patch updates and the potential of Android 16 coming here one day in the future. The setup process for the phone was simple, I changed the navigation bar settings from buttons to swipe gestures, put in my details into Samsung Wallet for tap to pay, and configured the lock screen settings to have the flashlight toggle, as well as my contact name and email in case it gets lost. I then registered my fingerprints and face data for biometric unlock. These are optional unlock methods, but I chose to use them both. The accuracy of the on-screen optical fingerprint scanner is good when the finger is placed correctly in the center. An exception to that in my experience was outdoors in the cold. The scanner has issues which resulted in me retrying the scan a few times, and that is where the face unlock comes to work immediately, so I'm happy with the combination. Besides the cold weather in Toronto causing that scanner problem, I'm happy with the speeds of both biometrics. The fingerprint scan also works when the display is off. That is a feature that can be toggled in the fingerprint settings. Here in the settings we can also notice that you're limited to scanning three fingers only. Now on another note, I have been using several different carriers on my unlocked A54 and both call quality as well as data reception have been excellent. 
Although my main network provider still does not support 5G, I did get to try it out on a friend's sim and I am happy to report that these speeds are up to my expectations. The loudspeakers are stereo and they get loud. The audio quality is great for a mid-range phone and it has a surprisingly pleasant clarity at high volume. For gaming, this provides a decent experience. I listen to many genres of music and I approve of these speakers on the A54. It's time to talk about gaming on this phone. After that, we're going to get to benchmarks and also day-to-day -day performance and my experience having used it for over two weeks. Gaming was an area that I had high hopes for. Starting with Call of Duty Mobile, I was able to play at high graphics with the very high frame rate option enabled and the gameplay was smooth. Thankfully, I did not experience the frame drops that were present on previous Galaxy A-series devices at the high frame rate mode. I played for over an hour on high brightness and there was no heating issues. Even playing competitively, I felt like I had nothing going against me here and the hardware is not a bottleneck at this setting. PUBG Mobile is limited to the high frame rate option at HD settings and on that mode, it is quite enjoyable. The chipset didn't overheat in this game either and the gameplay was smooth. I noticed the battery consumption of this game was lower than on any Galaxy A-series devices I've tested before on this graphics setting option. New State Mobile plays at ultra graphics quality on max frame rate option which was again a smooth experience that impressed me. Apex Legends was also a great title to play on this phone, I had a lot of fun in this game and the performance was right up to the level that I expected. Same can be said about Minecraft, this game takes advantage of the high refresh rate of the A54 and there was no lag. It is nice that none of these games caused overheating in my experience. On that topic, I did not feel a significant amount of heat coming from the phone when I did that 11 hour battery drain test. Credit to Samsung for doing right with thermals in this chip. Although I can tell the difference between gameplay performance on a current Samsung flagship phone with a Snapdragon chip and this Exynos phone, I will leave further flagship comparisons for the dedicated S23 versus A54 head-to-head -head comparison video. Nothing should take away how impressive this Exynos 1380 chip is for the price range. That price is higher in almost every region I've seen this year as compared to previous models, so for that we have got to have higher expectations for benchmarks as well as day-to-day -day performance. The benchmark results are promising as to an improved CPU and GPU performance over the previous models. The Geekbench 6 scores are in the ballpark of what I expected, as is the Geekbench machine learning test score. In day-to-day -day use, I can say the Exynos 1380 in this phone has been very smooth running adaptive 120Hz on all the supporting apps. There are no stutters and I have not encountered lag or app crashing. Swiping through the home screens, Samsung Edge panel and Google Discover menu is smooth as you'd expect for a phone of this price. The model I have has 8GB of RAM. That also further justifies the price I paid for this phone, and as for the RAM performance, I am truly satisfied. Switching apps is no problem with this amount of RAM, and I don't think 8GB is overkill if Samsung plans on keeping their promise of so many software updates in the future. I don't use these words often, but the Galaxy A54 is future-proof for a while to come. I'm curious to hear your experiences with the older Exynos chips, and if you have picked up the A54 already, feel free to share your experience of day-to-day -day performance. The micro SD and SIM slot on the top is pretty cool, so I thought I'd show you how it works. In the place of the micro SD in the tray, you can choose to put a secondary nano SIM sideways. The other side of this tray is for SIM 1, of course. If you want to, you can move apps to the micro SD card in the apps menu of settings. In the developer options, enabling force allow apps on external will grant you the ability to move some apps that you may not have previously had this option on by default. Now my friends, we're onto the cameras. There's three rear lenses and the main one is 50 megapixels, it's the one in the middle. We have an ultra wide camera on the top and that is 12 megapixels. The third lens is unfortunately the macro lens, it's a 5 megapixel camera and we've seen this for far too long. The other two cameras are what I'm going to focus on and we shouldn't judge them just by megapixel count. The main camera is capable of taking incredible still images with vibrant colors, great dynamic range and surprisingly better detail than previous models. 2x zoom is simply digital crop, but even that is usable for social media posts in my opinion. Photos taken at night are also usable, the image processing of night mode does its job well. The amount of image grain does not take away from the subject or the background in most cases. We have the pro photo mode built into the camera app of course, so control of ISO and shutter speed is easy. Portrait blur mode is available for both the rear camera and the front camera. I think this is another usable feature that makes sense on the A54. You get what you pay for in terms of the image processing and sharpness of the main camera. I'm happy with it. The ultra wide camera pulls off flagship level photos that are amazing. This is the best ultra wide camera I've seen on a mid range phone so far. 
Macro shots, on the other hand, are nothing special, but on the odd occasion you decide to snap macros, it's here, and the sharpness is not bad. I bet some of you didn't know the US had a $1 coin, but here it is from my A54 macro lens. If you have a micro SD card inserted, a prompt will appear in the camera app and you can have images saved by default to your memory card. I mentioned video quality earlier, and that rear main camera quality is excellent because of decent stabilization. I personally do not need an 8K video recording limit. 4K at 30fps here can capture any moment in detail, and 4K is not limiting for my uses. The ultra-wide camera records 4K video as well, and it is very capable in good lighting. The selfies I've taken on the front 32 megapixel camera are good as you'd expect. It's not over-sharpened or over-processed in any way, which is nice because I want my selfies looking as natural as possible. I think this actually does a really good job with portrait mode. The front lens is also capable of taking 4K videos at 30 frames per second, and it's sure to satisfy video calling needs. Let's touch on build quality and the feel in the hand with this phone. Glass feels very premium to hold, and this phone has the benefit of looking a lot like the flagship device. The sides at least mimic anodized aluminum, so from a feel in the hand perspective, I'm not complaining. You can tell the volume keys and the power button are made of plastic, but the click is audible and the buttons are not shallow. The sides here on the A54 5G are again plastic, and that was the one plastic part of these phones that actually didn't hold up great. The A54 has diminished resistance to drops. Without a doubt, the plastic backs from prior years are less prone to showing wear if they fall. Now impact from drops aside, the Gorilla Glass 5 used here will hold up well against scratches, and the white color I have will show micro scratches even less than other colors in my experience. Between a nice premium feel and look, and the durability of plastic, I'm curious which one you'd rather take. Personally, I am enjoying the better gaming experience, as well as the better battery life, and the slightly brighter display. In case you were wondering, this phone is IP67 rated, which means water and dust resistant. I feel very comfortable bringing this to the edge of the shower, and I've even seen it dunked underwater already. I will be putting this phone up against the iPhone 14 for those of you who are curious about the performance difference, and may want to save some money on your next phone upgrade. I'll stay up to date with you in the comments, my friends. As always, I appreciate the likes, and I'll see you soon.